Hello everybody. In today's video I'm going to introduce you to using images as textures. Creating textures is as easy as photographing interesting surfaces in your surroundings. This morning I took a picture of a concrete wall, a cork board, a wooden fence, and the grass in my backyard. To demonstrate how to use these images as textures, I'm going to create a polygon plane. In earlier videos, I showed you how to create materials. You can go to the Hypershade, open it, and create a new material. I'm going to create a Lambert. With my new material selected, I will go to the Attribute Editor. Previously, I showed you how you could change the material to be a solid color, such as red. If we wish to use an image as a texture instead for this color channel, what we can do is go to the checkerboard to the right and click on it. The Create Render node pop-up will appear. And because we want to apply an image, we'll select File. Now, in the Attribute Editor, we'll go to the Image Name field. If you click on the folder icon, you can navigate to where your image is on your computer. I'm going to select the concrete.jpg that I created earlier today. To see the texture applied to your model, you may need to click on the textured icon in your viewport. Another option, of course, is to use the hotkeys. 4 is wireframe, 5 is shaded, and 6 is textured. If we zoom in on my polygon plane, you'll see that the photograph that I took of the concrete wall actually makes for a very nice texture. Lots of wonderful detail. I'm going to try out one of the other textures that I created today. And to do that, I'll go ahead and uh, create another polygon plane so that we can compare. Remember that you can go to the Hypershade, create your material. Once again, I'm going to make a Lambert. And with your material selected, go to the Attribute Editor, click on the checkerboard to the right of the color field, Select File, click on the folder, and navigate to where your texture is on your computer, and then apply it. I'll now middle mouse drag the material onto my polygon plane. And once again, if we zoom in, you'll see that this texture has some really nice detail as well. While it's so easy to just download an image to use as a texture, creating your own unique textures really is as easy as just going out, finding interesting surfaces, and photographing them. Notice how if we open up the Hypershade and we select a material, to the right you'll see the material applied to the shader ball so it gives you an idea of what the texture is going to look like. It really is a good idea to name the objects in your Maya scenes, so I'm going to quickly rename the two materials that I've created. And I'll now create a third material. You'll remember in a previous video I showed you another way that you could make materials. 
and that is by right-click holding on the object and then navigating to Assign New Material. Once again, I will choose a Lambert, and once again in the Attribute Editor, I'll go to the Color Channel, click on the checkerboard, select File, navigate to the file I want to use, in this case the wood fence, and apply it. Now, what if I decide that the wood fence texture is not actually the texture I want to use for this material? Well, I can change it very easily. All I need to do is go to the Hypershade, find the material in the Attribute Editor, click on the black arrow to the right of the color field, click on the folder again, and simply assign it a different texture, in this case the grass texture that I created. So far we've only applied these materials to flat polygon planes. Let's see how these materials look on polygon primitives with more of a three-dimensional form, some cubes and some spheres. I'll quickly middle mouse drag these materials onto these polygon primitives. And we'll see how they look. And here you can see my concrete texture applied to the cube. And applied to the sphere. And here is the actual texture that I created. I'd like to quickly mention a few things that will help you to create more effective, better textures using a camera. You'll notice that I cropped the image so that it is perfectly square. This is not absolutely necessary, however it will give you better results. Another recommendation when you take pictures uh, for textures is avoid hard shadows. The concrete wall that I took the picture of for this texture was under the shade of a tree. And finally, while also not absolutely necessary, textures at dimensions of 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024, or 2048 by 2048 will work best. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.